<laughs> I feel so happy. <laughs> okay, we're going to get started tonight. Tonight we're going to work on optical um, drawings. And um, so I told you to bring your, your pen and maybe some Sharpies and some shapes that you might want to um, do. So we're probably going to be doing circles and things like that, but I'm going to show you um, some of the um, pictures you know, I didn't actually bring all my optical pictures because I showed them last week, so I didn't want to show them again. But um, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use to make shapes and stuff like that. And of course, you know, I use um, like an old CD, which is great. Um, I use them all the time. And of course, circles are really important in my work. So anything that when I find a circle, I grab it. So this is some sort of Fisker's circle. I think, I don't know. I've painted over it so many times that I don't know anymore. Oh, here's the original. I haven't used this one. This is the purple one. This is what it looked like when I got it. And now this is what they look like <laughs> now that I got a hold of them. <laughs> so anyway, I use circle templates. I quite often use these um, little circle templates. These are like a drafting template and they're just really handy to use. Um, the other circle that I have, of course, is this one that I showed you um, before with this one. It's got this, it's like a spirograph, but not. And then uh, I have this. This is probably another Fisker's thing. I, I stole it from my mom because I didn't think she was using it. So, of course, I am because I use it for spray paint and everything. Yep. And then I found this one too, which I have never used. But one of the other tools that I want to show you, and it's something that I used, oh, and a ruler, that I used in interior design school and, and when I was learning drafting and stuff like that, and that's this, and it's called a French curve, and it's kind of cool because you can create really beautiful curves, you know, um, when, you, when you go to draw something like a curve or a swirl or something like that, you have to either do it in one go you can't just go and, or, or try and you can't, you have to do it or, or it's not fluid, right? The only other way you can get around that is by using something like this, which is a French curve. And then I can, I can move because it has all these weird little shapes on here. And I'll show you how I use it um, tonight. Cause it's kind of cool. Cause I can do like a curve here and then I can turn it this way and make the curve go this way. And it's just sort of matching it up. Um, I did it. I did the same sort of um, system. I'm, I was working on a commission. I've been working on a commission for a customer um, for a couple of months now, or I guess a month, a month, yeah. Anyway, I've been spray painting in my dining room upstairs. No furniture in there, it's just all on the floor. But I created a whole bunch of um, stencils so that I could create these warbly lines across the, um, closet doors that I'm doing this commission on. So anyway, and it's the same sort of principle that I use when I'm using the French curve. The, the one that I, that I bought originally when I was doing interior design, this one's starting to fall apart. So I can see it's breaking, but it has, it had three curves and I don't know what the third one is, but it has a little one too. So they're just kind of neat little drafting things that, you know, you wouldn't normally think that they were, wouldn't even know what they were for. That's what they are. The interesting thing about these is that the edge on them is beveled sort of. And remember how I talked to you about, you know, when you're using a ruler to flip it over so that if you're using an ink pen against it, the ink doesn't suck underneath the, that ruler. It's the same principle for these. So they have like these beveled lines all the way around. Now, of course I have a French curve that doesn't have those bevels, but it's not a Stadler and Stadler knows how to do this kind of stuff. So. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you those. So really all we're gonna be working on is pretty much in our sketchbooks. And um, I'm gonna show you sort of how to um, do these things. Oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. One of the things that I did with my students and actually Jody did this with her students was um, we would do these op art cubes and they're kind of fun. And what you would do is you would, you would create the template for this box and then the, the students had to do a different op art um, pattern in each side. And then you put it together in a box, which was 
really great for people who like to work on something really quietly for a long time. But after a while, it's just, it can be a little bit too much. And you can see on this side, my op art didn't work because you can see those lines. That's where my pattern, I messed up my pattern or something. So yeah. anyway, it's easy to do that. So who knows? We'll yeah. show you how. I'll show you how to mess it up because I probably will do that tonight too. Okay, so we're going to switch to the view so you can watch what I'm doing. And I have two different types of pens I'm using tonight. I'm using my, my Uniball pen that I like so much. And then I have a couple of different sizes of Sharpie marker because sometimes it's just easier to um, color big areas of black with a Sharpie rather than this little tiny little nib. Okay, Bill's moving me over. So now I have to move. Okay. <laughs> He's leading me with a carrot or something. Okay. Let's see if we got a cane. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use my circle template first because I just think it's kind of a neat thing. So I'm just going to choose a couple of spots here and I'm just going to make like a bit of a bullseye here. Oh, that one has paint in it. Some of my think some of them, this little template thing has two different sizes of holes. One's for pencil, one's for pen. So I've just created that. I'm going to bring in the, um, this uh, French curve just to show you sort of how it works. So I can do something like, I, don't know, I, I sure hope I do it right. I'm going to do something like that. And then I can take this and as long as I match it up, and maybe I want it to curve a little bit more. As long as I match up that line. I can create a pretty nice little arc with it. And that's cool. Yeah, it's just, you know, Karen, it's sort of one, one of those unknown tools. Karen, have you seen the flexible French curve? Yes. Um, I did have one of those once upon a time. I think I had two. I think my parents bought me one. And I, I think I used one when I was in interior design, but I didn't use it very often because it wasn't as rigid, I found. So the so thing would kind of move? Yeah, it kind of move on you a little bit. Like it, it doesn't have a big surface to hold on to. So it's pretty narrow and yeah. So I, I think I struggled with it a little bit. I've kind of looked for it to see if I still have it, but I must have gotten rid of both of them because I can't find either of them because I've looked. I still have mine. Yeah. And so that might be something that you can use. The problem that I would find is that I want these um, arcs to be fluid, right? So having a standard thing that I don't have to move around as much. I just find this works really well. And then, you know, I can also do, you know, things like going into these little curves here, and then you just have to figure out where you want that curve to go after you've built it, right? Not matching up very well here. Yeah, see, now I didn't do it right. There's going to be a run on French curves in Calgary. <laughs> They're going, what the heck? <laughs> Everybody's buying these things. They, they don't even know what they're for. <laughs> so, you know, you can just. So even with this, with this beveled edge and stuff like that, I'm getting a little bit of black on my paper because, um, I must be I must be putting the ruler down on wet ink and it's lifting it. So sometimes you just have to wait for that ink to dry before you do your next line. So anyway, so what I'm really doing right now is just making shapes and I'm I'm going pretty random with this cuz uh well, because I'm trying to demonstrate this curve here. So, you know, then I can go in and I could do things like this and just start to um, create maybe some interesting straight lines. 
turn my ruler upside down. I'm trying to be very careful about how I do these lines so that I don't end up messing up my um, system. Because when you start to get really um, complex like this, you can mess up the optical art easily. Oh, my ruler. Because it's really a mathematics thing, actually. Not that I understand the math, but. Well, it, it's sort of a mathematics, but it's also a bit of a logic problem. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to switch to something easier just to show you. I'm going to continue showing you something, but I'm going to do it in an easier format so that you guys can see just the gist of this. Okay, so let me do a couple more circles. So an easy way to do this is just to do lines across. Okay, so you can just do a bunch of lines across this and you could create sort of even a grid and it doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to be like the same proportion across or the same measurement across. And I'm just going to do a couple of lines across here just to break it up a little bit. I am finding a couple of places where I can just where it sort of crisscrosses so that I'm okay. So this is my simpler system. So now what you need to do is you need to decide where you're going to start with your black. And you know what? I'm going to start with this one right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a smaller Sharpie. Basically, I'm going to color that black. I'm going to do this really quickly so you can just get the idea of what I'm doing. And then I can, once I get, you know, part of it colored, I'm not going to be too precise here because I don't want to mess it up. So once I've got this one done, now what the what the rule is is you do the opposite corner so i'm going to do this one too and i think i've already got a problem with this one because i did it i messed something up so anyway and then i'm going to do this one over here because it's it's like that checkered flag sort of thing right so it's Where on the diagonals it's on the diagonals okay so then I'm going to go over here. And sometimes I like just doing it this way because sometimes I get so in, enamored with the coloring, I sort of forget what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden I've made the wrong move. Kind of like playing checkers, I guess. And then this space here is the diagonal for both of these. And then, you know, after I've sort of made a few of them that it's like, okay, well, those are pretty much where I want them. Then I can work back into them and try and get as close to those lines as possible without going over. And quite often what I'll do with a Sharpie is I will just get close and then I'll use my fine liner to just do those edges to the line so that I don't go over the line because the Sharpie will sort of morph into the next area right so if i just go in with my with my pen i can just get right to those edges and then it's more it's like a, a sharper sharper line And again, like I'm just using black and white because um, it has, it's very impactful, but you can do it with other 
things. You can do it with other shapes. One of the uh, one of the sort of exercises I was doing with kids was we were doing like an outline of their hand and then doing a checker flag sort of over the hand and, and uh, doing it that way. It was kind of a neat thing for the kids to do. And yes, I'm rotating my book all the time. You know, my daughters took an art class from when they were in school. And I remember my daughter coming home and she was upset because the teacher said that she wasn't allowed to rotate her paper. And I didn't understand why you weren't allowed to rotate your paper. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Like, that's okay. I didn't like much like the art teacher there anyway. So <laughs> they weren't doing a very good job. So anyway, it's, it's again, it's just sort of one of those um, things kind of like doodling, right? Except you do have to sort of, I mean, when you're doodling, you're thinking, but this is more, um, I guess, more of a mathematical logic problem kind of thinking, right? Because you're, you're trying to make sure that you don't make the wrong move or color the wrong square. But if you do, that's okay too. It just... That's the way life is. Sometimes not we, the end of the world. Yeah, sometimes we just color in the wrong squares. <laughs> Look at me, bears. I'm coloring in the wrong squares. Yeah. Can I, I do used like to, I, Oh, sorry. Go, sorry ahead. go ahead, Joe. I was just going to say it wasn't really. Um, the awe part, but sometimes one of the projects I had to do was zebrify everything. And they, you know, like they use do zebra stripes on yeah. different, ob they draw different objects and then they had to zebrify them. Yeah. I think I did that with my students too. I stole a lot of Jody's projects. <laughs> well, weren't all for me. Kind of stole them and then changed them and yep. different things That's with them. I that's what I did too. But you know, that's, that's what art is. Stealing ideas and changing them, making them your own. Yeah, and, and I would even hesitate to call it stealing because you really, once you're starting to make something make it your own, you know, it's, it's not a matter of not, like you're trying to pass off yourself as, as that artist. That's true. Do they have to be parallel lines? No. Okay. They don't even have to be straight lines. You could do squiggly lines. Okay. You, you could just do it all freehand and not even have to use any shapes. You could make your own shapes. That's way too scary. <laughs> <laughs> So just these first few that I've done are coming together pretty good. I mean, if you go skinnier lines and stuff like that, it does start to give you a bit of an optical illusion. Where's my cue? Like, there's um the artist to look at for op art. The best one is um, is an English artist in the uh, '60s, and her name is Bridget Riley. And um, I would recommend you look her up. Um, she did all kinds of designs um, and they showed up on clothes. You know, if you think high fashion London in the 60s, Bridget Riley dresses and so forth. There's, it's uh, quite amazing. That's cool. Hi, Fee. Okay, so. So once I've got a few of them done, then it's time for me to sort of 
pick out the next ones that I'm going to do. And I do like just going through and highlighting them first with color because then I are just a spot. So and it's best if you start from the inside. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I think so in a couple of these places, I. Yeah. So where I crossed, like right here, where I intersected a line. Yeah. That's going to mess me up. Because if I color this one and this one, well, the diagonal for this one is this one. Ah. Uh, right? But the diagonal for this one is this one. Oh, I've probably already messed myself up then before I even started. But I can get over that if I just, if if I know that this one, another area. this one is the diagonal for that one, and this one's the diagonal for that one, I just color the whole thing. Okay. And it's just, I've just or changed you can, the shape. And, or you can use another, like create another line that intersects or something. And yeah, I could, I could have tried to, to change it by just adding another area. But I just rubbed it out <laughs> instead. <laughs> it is tempting to have white out. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no white out. Because it, it's chunky. I know. So, okay. I bought a white pen. Is that cheating? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little. Non chunky white out. Yeah. Can you can you zoom smart, in on smart the area? Can you zoom on the in on the area that you say is problematic? Where okay. I'm gonna try got... lifting. Okay. So, okay, so where I had the problem was I'm just gonna oh my gosh. Okay. Was right here where I intersected because the diagonal for this was this space and the diagonal for this was this space right okay so i kind of messed it up okay well maybe actually i didn't now i've messed it up anyway see now i overthought okay. it did i overthink it yeah I'm, i think yeah, i, I have did plenty of little pointy areas and I'm trying to avoid creating that. Oh, I've got a whole bunch of them. Now I'm all messed up. Well, I think actually I didn't mess it up. I was thinking I had, but I didn't. And now I've messed it up because I added black there. Where's that white pen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I messed mine up too, but I'm going to yeah. work with it. Yeah, you're right. I wasn't wrong. I was, I, mine was right. I, I just now I've messed it up because I've tried to self correct myself and I should just I should have just kept doing my little black lines and not worry about whether it works or not at this point. When you say your little black lines, you mean where you're marking it out like that Yeah, where I marked it out. Yeah, I should have just kept doing that and then not think about just keep going. Yeah. Diagonal. Sure, kind of rhythm that. doing that way. Hmm? Did you have a question for me? Yeah. Isn't it okay if on occasion you have two that aren't quite of your design? In other words, to add a little tension to the, you know, instead of having every, if everything doesn't always work out perfectly that on the diagonal, if you have two that if something messes up, quote unquote messes up, that can be interesting, can't it? It can. You you know that that can give that piece that little bit of focal point or that little bit of tension. It depends on how your piece ends up, and it could be you know like even with um, you know like things like um, Escher's um, staircase and stuff like that. If you guys are familiar with that piece, the stairs never go anywhere because there's something wrong with the way they're drawn but maybe it's right because he's, he's 
the optical illusion that the stairs just keep going and going, right? Right. So mathematically, there's something wrong with the drawing, but it's, it's intentional. So it's the same sort of thing here, I guess. You know, if you have something that you've done wrong, you can make it seem as an intentional fly in the ointment sort of thing, right? Yeah, well, we'll see. Oh, poo. It also depends whether you're trying to go for that optical illusion, because I mean, op art used to, they were going was to trick the eye and to give a sense of motion or of something receding and coming forward and going back with using concentric lines and, and accentuating them with, with the pattern of the lights. So it's yeah. actually, so when you look at some of them, it looks like the page is moving because of the, the, the wavy lines or whatever, yeah. or the lines getting yeah. narrower, you know, like, narrower and narrower and narrower. Like this, right? You know, like this is not a great example, but it's like where it gets thicker and thinner and. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, I don't, well, I have all my stuff at the other studio, Bridget Riley. Yeah, I've definitely messed mine up. <laughs> yeah, well. And part of it is when you try to get too complicated. Yeah. With your, yeah. And I think that's like what a, I did. Like mine here, I tried to get too complicated. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. You yeah. Know, if I stuck circles, with something right? like, if I stuck with something like this, that probably would have worked better. Yeah. But you learn. Yeah. It's never a waste. Like I've got too many circles. Does that make? Oh, that looks really good though. Yeah, it yeah. does. I'm confused. Okay. Where on the diagonal okay. it will look like it's going to be. Hmm. I may have mayhem on my hands. Wow. Oh. <laughs> You've got a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that will be a challenge. Oh my gosh, like, Leslie. Oh, you don't do the, like you don't go the easy thing. road, do you? <laughs> Are you trying to show us all up? Exactly. <laughs> okay. okay so I'm going to start again, actually. It's going to be really scary, I have a feeling, but. You go. I wanted to break up. I had really big chunky areas. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a couple of really teeny tiny ones that I may have to fill in in order for it to work. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Poo. So I got to tell you about this pen here. I, I was just, I just picked it up and I was starting to use it, my rollerball pal pen, and it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Did you know that pens are made to have, like a pen with a cap, is made to have the the cap put on the back to help with the balance of the pen. Oh, really? So if you pick up a pen yeah. and you're using it without that cap on the back, it doesn't feel quite right. It well, that's why I, well, I thought it was so yet you didn't lose the cap. <laughs> well, maybe that's true too. But the balance of the pen is better when there's a cap on the back. It just, it fits into your hand better. Interest. Isn't that neat? I learned that at Interior Design. So they're messing with your head right from the beginning. Yeah. Either that or they just stuck it in my head in interior design and now I just can't use it. Can't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, our, our mom used to tell us about that too, Karen. Did she? Mom used to, yeah. Probably because well, of calligraphy, right? Stepping the pen. Okay, I have a problem. <laughs> Do you? Well, there is no great... Where is it? Hmm. 
Hmm. I can't figure out what my diagonals will be in this corner because I've got the matching. Like, oh, if I so do the diagonal I here, it would it. be it would be here. Yeah. If I do the, can you see that? You do the diagonal. If I do the if I, well, this one, the diagonal to that is here. Okay, you need to move closer so I can see. Yeah, the diagonal to that. You see my little is there, gap? yeah. Okay, so but then you have these tiny little triangles that are the diagonals to that, and then that long strip just off to the side is your next. If you if you box this in, say, right, okay. like you've got two this little. One. No, that try the second one that you marked with the triangle. Right. Yeah, there's two little tiny triangles on the diagonal of those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's still working in my yeah. in my eye. I see it still okay. working. Okay. okay. I'm going to go mad before the night is out. Yeah. You know, I, I I when I first started doing it, I was like, oh, this is easy. It's just like checkered flag. But then I realized that no, there's a little no. bit of thought process to it and a little bit of logic problem. Once you add the lines with the circles, that's where it goes bananas. Yeah. I did this one. Where was it? I think it's in this book here. Okay. It's broke my chair. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Um, Let's see. There's one that I was trying to do. It works. So, oh, yeah. Okay. I was trying to do this. Oh. And I was really having um, doing a grid and then these squares and just doing some swirls around the squares. And I ended up doing, ending it, I ended up with that. Oh, wow. And that worked out really well. Right. I mean, I planned it all out. I never did it with the students that I had. Right. But that's, you know, kind of an interest. And that took me a while to figure it out, too. Because yeah, I, I like, can imagine. Again, even then, I was still like, oh. <laughs> but that's sort of that optical sort of feel, right? Because you right. sort of feel it moving a little bit. Yeah. That looks like it would make a lovely quilt. Yes. Yes. Brad Brim is not here. <laughs> mm -hmm. she get some inspiration. Don't forget, I'm an award-winning quilter. Are you? Yes, I am. I've won three ribbons at the Stampede for my quilting. Nice. Good job. <laughs> well, you know what? I just to toot my own horn. I actually won a ribbon from the Stampede for quilting also. Oh, awesome. The really? one quilt I ever made. Oh, shoot. It was a, it was a quilt that my mom and I had started in 1980. Oh, yeah, beautiful. And it was a, it's called a cathedral window, and and it was like a series of folds where you fold the fabric in a certain way, and then you stitch it, and then you fold it and press it, and you stitch it, and then you fold it again and stitch it, and then you put them together, and then you put colored things in it, and, um. My mom and I started it together and then when I moved out she gave it to me and I and I was slowly kind of working on it and my husband's mother is a quilter and she even though it was partially done it was only half done she submitted it to the stampede for me and I won a ribbon. Oh wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, That's awesome. Good. Yeah. And then uh, I slowly finished it and it was funny because my mom would phone and she'd say whatever happened to that quilt we were working on? And I said, I don't know, mom, I don't have it. You must have it. Yeah. And I kept telling her that. And she's like, I don't have it. And I'm like, well, mom, I don't have it. Why would I have it? I, you know, I don't, I don't quilt secretly all that time. I've been working on it, working on it. And I think I gave it to her for, it was either her 60th or 70th. Maybe it was her 70th. It was her 70th. Yeah. Yeah. I wrapped it up and gave it to her completed 
So she was very surprised. Yeah, it's a real. And then she was mad at me for lying to her all those years. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I made a cathedral window pillow. That yeah. was as much as I wanted to do with that because <laughs> it is so labor intensive. <laughs> it is hugely, yeah. So, but it was kind of fun to finish it up for her. Kind of a high it. as a kite on sharpies over here. <laughs> oh come on, Jesus! You get I used to the smell. Smeller. I need a fan. <laughs> How do you Whoa. ever get through doing alcohol inks? Oh, she could only do so much or we have to lie her down. It's worse. <laughs> I swear, this is worse. Ugh. It's the same. Well, you know, Sharpies is a bit, got a weird smell, but it, it is the same stuff as alcohol inks. I can't draw. I can't outline straight anymore. You have to look at mine from across the room to see the line. If you look up close, it'll be wobbly. Yeah, it's not an easy thing to no. stay in those lines. I used to pride myself at staying in the lines. Okay. Oh, and Kelly, where's your bird? He's quietly sitting there with his chest puffed out. Maybe he bird. needs to be on your shoulder to make your lines better. But <laughs> he'll eat my lines. We, we we've been having like a month long um, uh, happy spell. And he was a little antsy last night, so I thought he wanted some more attention. Probably not. <clears throat> but so, anyways, I gave him some, and we practiced uh, stepping up and getting a treat and then putting him down and getting a treat and stepping up. And then I thought he, we were doing really well. He just reached down and chomped on my hand. Uh oh. And then my other hand. And so now I have two, I have four bite marks. So I'm reluctant to put them on my shoulder, Spencer. Yeah, I, I, might, I might have another earring hole. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was dangerous. Or a missing ear. <laughs> or a missing ear. Sounds dangerous, Kelly. Well, he's not necessarily dangerous. He's just, um, it's, it's called senitude, actually. Senegal attitude. Hmm. Yeah. And he's sitting turned away from me, so that, that gives you an idea of how happy he is with me. <laughs> he will. Well, you're, you you should be turned away from him. He's the one who you were the one who got bit. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I just can't do that. <laughs> So far, so good. I think I'm doing, I had a little bobble in, in making my ring. So I have a little uh, crooked sort of, it's really going to freak you out when you look at it. <laughs> as well as my inability to color in the lines. He was grinding his beak a couple of minutes ago. Spencer, that's a good sign. It means he's content. Oh, good. So I don't move him then. That and my husband is cooking dinner while I'm up here and he can't be out of the cage when he's cooking dinner in case he decides to fry himself. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, we don't want that. No, you don't want that. No. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not As sure. As I missed your wacky drawing before, can you hold it up for me? Which one? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Lee's. Yeah, I want to see how you're doing. Oh boy. Oh, it's looking pretty good though. Yeah, yeah. That looks huh. good. I think. Hmm. If you can't talk and 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 do this very well. No, oh, some of these sessions are very quiet. And Isn't it funny? Yeah. It's just in that. some ways. It's because your speech center is on the left side of your brain, but your spatial center is on the right side. Oh, okay. Well, that's excellent. Thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got too many crossovers here and then I can't do. I can't do some others. Oh, there's one I can do right there. Ooh, I think I figured something out. Well, it's getting there. I guess I overthought that part that I thought I messed up, but I guess I didn't. And well, I've I see what you mean by sometimes having to make like the corner or the X just a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, to add that other little teeny tiny one that's beside it in, so that you can get a diagonal. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I have a couple that I can't get a diagonal on. Yeah. So I'm caught sort of. Have you got some flowers out of your brain yet, Elizabeth? <laughs> Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. Thank you. I thought it was finished and then I turned it in and she had a whole bunch more suggestions for me. So oh, I'm late that? finishing my assignment now and now I have to try to catch up and I'm just <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh. And that's Sharon, right? Yes, I believe so. Yes, Sharon, Sharon Williams. She's slave, slave driver. She is. <laughs> but I'm learning a lot. She's really good. She is good at teaching. Yeah. I'll, I'll, give, her, you I'll know, give her a hard time about giving you a hard time. How's that? It, no, don't. She's good. She's good. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot. Like, I don't have another job. I don't know how the other ladies are doing it. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, uh, you know, it makes me really glad for this one because this is like just fun and relaxing and, and oh, I need that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's a time to tune out. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, I had a lady who was taking the art class with us when, when we had kids in the class and stuff like that. And she said, you know, her and her husband were taking, they were taking an art therapy class and he was really frustrated with the art therapy class. And she said, you know what? She said, your class is more like art therapy than, <laughs> than the art therapy was because it's not, you're not trying to do anything. And, and, you know, in the art therapy class she was taking, they were like, uh, resolve your inner feelings by drawing 
what you look like when, you know. Oh my like, gosh. So you'd be like, ah, oh, trying to do this cerebral sort of drawing, whereas this is just, you know, relaxing and it's like, it's not. He's kind of sleeping over there with his eyes open. Yeah, you don't want to have to think all the time. I, I find out on the spot like that, it doesn't come to me right away. Oh, I'm getting black all over. Joy of being left-handed. Hmm. You know, when you're working on something and you're left-handed and you need to, um, sometimes it's good to have a second piece of paper. Right. That you can just set down and use as a blotter for your hand so you're uh, not rubbing across the ink. Yeah. And that will help a little bit. Thanks. I know... Um, people who are, who draw with pencil yeah. will do that sort of thing so that they're not rubbing the pencil as they move across their page and, and right. do their pencil drawings. I'm left-handed too. Are you? Yes. And I've learned to always start on the right side of my page instead of, because, you know, we're all taught, we read left to right. We do everything yes. left to right. Yes. So when I draw or when I do it, anything, I always start on the right side of the page and I I'll have left. To just think about that and see if I kind of do that by nature. Like, like if I was told that I couldn't turn my page around, I'd be crazy right now. Yeah. Because I have to. Yeah. Like I'm doing it continually. Yeah. In order to be able to reach it without going over. The other bits. Hmm. Okay, so I sort of finished the initial sort of circle that I was doing, even with my big, you know, mess up there, it still sort of reads like it doesn't, I find that that mistake, I, I see it because I'm looking at it, but it's not as obvious, I think, as it could be. Mm -hmm. I do think it adds a level of interest. Yeah, because you're it, it's it, cause you're looking that. for that little moon that should be in there, you know? Yeah, yeah, that circle, where'd that circle go? It just kind of disappeared yeah. there and it's sort of like that. It is a bit of a focal point sort of thing. Oh, I just messed up again. Dang it. <laughs> Should have used another circle. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Boy, the hour sure has gone by. <laughs> Is it already eight o'clock? <laughs> Almost. Oh my goodness. Okay. So remember I told you at the beginning, there were certain things I was going to get you to start to scrounge for us to do some of our projects with. Uh -huh. That time is starting to come up. So one of the things I had talked to you about was um, styrofoam sheets. And those could be the bottom of the of a, of a meat tray from 
the store. It could be the bottom of a takeout container. Just like a thin sheet of styrofoam is what you're looking for. And it's not the styrofoam that is big and chunky and stuff like that. It's the thin sheets of, of styrofoam. So a finer you, grain, right? Yeah, it's got a finer grain to it. Not so like this. You don't like that. That's good. Exactly like that. Okay. Yes. So you can get them in white or black or whatever, or blue or whatever color. As long as there's no pattern on it, um, you just want a nice sort of clean, okay, clean one. And, and um, so you're going to need that. And I'll, I'll have the list of supplies. You're going to need paint again and paper. Okay. For you, we're going to be doing, we're doing our first set of mono prints starting next week. And what the mono print no, and what the mono prints are is it's it's like a single print. Now I don't always just leave it at a single print. I always work back into it because you know I like coloring. So um, anyway, so if you have pencil crayons and stuff like that, you could use those. But we probably won't use much of them because the paint will probably will most likely still be wet. But anyway, so styrofoam and pencils and stuff like that we're going to be playing with. So I'm sort of at a point where I just added some extra lines on mine and I screwed that up too. So now it's really messed up, but <laughs> adding to it anyway. Do you guys want to go into gallery mode and show what you've done tonight? Sure. Anyone? Sure. Feels like he's raring to go here. I sort of feel like I'm just one, one more minute. Let me just Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Just, just want to finish coloring this one in. I've kind of pushed a couple things. Wow. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. That's it's, cool, Kelly. It's That's freaky, fun. actually, when you start doing it and then you go, oh, no, now I can't. Some of these I can't do because I don't have a diagonal. Mm -hmm. I kind of had to fudge a bit. Well, and fudging's okay. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> all right. Who else has one to show? Here's mine. Oh, oh cool. It's not finished. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's looking really good. That's very cool. Yeah. And I got to go back and fill in all my little corners because they're it's just, you know, yeah. done with the yeah, Sharpie and doing, it's yeah, too fat. But really you sort of get an idea. You sure yeah. do. Yeah, it, that's yeah really you good. have a, a a real um three-dimensional look on it yeah wow. it looks yeah. like a awesome. like a, a a chopped up sphere that's freaking with you <laughs> sort of feels like it's moving yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. there's movement in that, that that's okay. where you get the call all right who else wants to show i didn't know where to stop oh good leslie oh, oh wow that's yeah, wow that's awesome I went outside of the circle. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I looked up and you had a circle. And I was like, uh oh. <laughs> well, <we're laughs> no, it's great. It looks really good. Okay. Spencer, how are you doing tonight? I did something a little different. That's okay. <gasps> oh, 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 my goodness. That's amazing. That, that's fantastic. That, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't do it all tonight. <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> I, I was I was drawing on a simpler one tonight. I was putting colors on a simpler one. That's, That's awesome cool. too. You That's have a amazing. mathematical brain. Wow, you really jumped into that one, didn't you? That's good. Very cool. All right, Jody, come on. You finish that circle. Uh, I didn't, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> mine is a, mine is the second attempt, so it's not an optical illusion. Oh, oh, I love it. That's, That's really great. beautiful, though. It's beautiful in its simplicity, right? Yeah. Yeah. I decided to go simple because I was I messed up the other one. So. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's wow. really cool. That's it fun. Is fun. All right. Well, that's what we yeah, did so tonight. Bridget Riley, look her up. What was her name again? Bridget Riley. You look it up on for images. You know, uh, Google. She's a British British artist from the 60s. Okay. Owie Zowie. I don't know if let me just see. I might have the blanket. 
Speaking of op art, uh, I picked up the Andy Warhol uh, mushroom soup cans the other day. Oh. <laughs> For his 60th anniversary. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were very cool. There's a there's another one. Oh, that's so oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah. But do they have scotch <laughs> broth? Do they have scotch broth? All I saw was mushroom soup. Uh, or oh, they had tomato soup. Okay. But the tomato soup cans didn't look as good. I saw tomato soup cans at Safeway a month ago or so. But yeah, when I saw them again the other day, I was like, kind of grab some. Okay. Because I think, I think he did scotch broth as one of his cans and they don't sell scotch broth anymore. Ah, yeah. that was my I favorite. remember scotch broth. Yeah, they, that was my you know favorite. what? But I found some, uh, what did they call it? What was that thing I found? I found one that was, it was like, it's, oh, it's called beef and barley now. <laughs> I think it's still scotch broth, but it's called beef and barley because maybe nobody knew what scotch broth meant. <laughs> <laughs> like we grew I up mean, on they it. They thought it was. It was too racist. Oh, me. Oh, so <laughs> those, those poor Scottish people. <laughs> exactly. You're thinking it's going to be like haggis, you know? Oh, maybe. <laughs> Ew, Scotch brother must be haggis. That's yeah, funny. it's floating in, in soup. Ew. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you guys for showing up tonight. That's great. Um, I look forward to doing, we're going to get messy next week with um, the uh, um, monoprints. The mono prints. Does, every, does anybody know what a brayer is? I have some. You have some? Okay. Yep. Uh, a brayer is like a, it's like a, handle with a wheel on it i'll put one in my uh things if you have one it's great if you don't don't worry about it you can use a paintbrush but um brayers are kind of a neat little tool um if you're trying to grow your your do art you want, do you want to use a, a like an acrylic or a glass sheet for putting a nope nope okay oh. What should you do? Well, just even a, a palette or something. There's a brayer. This is a brayer. Oh, that's that Jody the box. Has. Well, that's a brayer box. Yeah, that's what great. the box looks like that you keep a brayer in. <laughs> yeah, so that's a brayer. So it's, um, it's kind of a, a, a very uh, um, hard kind of uh, rubber. Rubber, yeah. So it has a give. Yeah. There's different types of brayers, but yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm probably going to use a brayer next week and show you how it works anyway, but you don't have to have one for the project. So part of my thing is here, I don't want you to have to go and buy a billion different things to do what we're doing here. Okay. I just, I'm just going to introduce you to some things. And then if you, if you want to buy them, then that's up to you, but I don't want you to have to, you know, go out and spend money on a brayer that we use once or five times or if you've got a roller on your bed um you can probably just take the wheel off and use it no they're not flat enough they're so silly you can use a spoon oh a spoon i guess yeah back, a big flat back of the spoon. anyway so that's what we're going to do next week is mono prints which is great for making cards yeah little pieces of artwork hey uh leslie what is that artwork up in your in your behind you with a black frame. <laughs> that Over there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that a... That's for, oh, oh, yeah, I'm off my mute. Uh, that's from uh, Calyx. Calyx. Crikey, I keep covering that. It's uh, an encaustic painting. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, I think I bought that the last time. Calyx ran. That's nice. I it caught my yeah, eye. Yeah, I love it. It looks nice. So, yeah. right. okay. Well, I will see you guys oh. next week, we'll and do. we'll do some mono printing. And yeah. so, continue with your op art pieces. Submit okay. them to us. Yeah, send them to us when you're done, if you want, and we will put them up on the on the site. Uh, I think on Karen Biko Creations. I think you can yeah. put them up yourself. If you're hey. so inclined, Spencer, you have my email. 
And Spencer, yeah, I just Bill's the great tech guy. So you just uh, use him if you need to. <laughs> Is it KarenBiko.com slash creations? No, it's just, uh, oh. Oh, it's Facebook. Facebook, it's Karen Facebook. Biko Creations and Creations with a K. I'm sorry, I'm Facebook incompetent. That's okay. You don't have to be on Facebook. But if you send pictures to Bill, he'll put them on Facebook for you. Oh, wow. This Bridget Riley stuff is very cool. Yeah. 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 And most of the time, I won't take credit if I post it. So you won't say it's yours? Yes. Okay. That's good. This is really good. Oh, then, then it's totally yours. Okay. Look at that one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they're amazing. I have a blanket that's a Bridget Riley. Oh, well, not an original. Oh my gosh. Is that are that is that printed? Is that what she did? Did she print? Um gingham wave pattern. That's cool. Yeah, because a lot of her stuff became textiles. Ah was, look uh, at that. I mean one. her original work was paintings and stuff. But was painting? Wow. Wow. Now that wouldn't, that I don't know that that one was a Bridget Riley. There was a lot of. No, that one that, isn't. That's a Samolevsky. Yeah, that looks like a later piece that's kind of riffing off. Oh, of that. wow. <laughs> the coat rabbit There's one, one that has a, a hand in it. Yes, that's sort of the uh, exercise I was doing with the kids. And it it's kind of fun, but yeah, that's an interesting way to do things. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Thank you for the name. It's interesting oh. just to, oh, wow. Sometimes it's good to have a bit of context too. Just to it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. Well, maybe we'll do a little bit more of that and, and uh, sort of sure. show off other. Um, have there artists. been any other projects that you want to do again? Do I want to do That's again? Mm. Or want to do more of, I guess? Yes. Well, we'll probably be doing more, more doodling and stuff but yeah i'm thinking right now more painting <laughs> more painting i don't have a lot of experience painting um i saw something not that long ago with watercolor where the person applied the watercolor sort of in just beads uh, there was like a drop of water and then a little bit of paint was applied to the water droplet and then the person did one of two things. They either broke the surface of the dot and let the watercolor do its thing or just left it to dry and evaporate without breaking the dot. Do you, and I, it made oh. me kind of curious as to how the dot could possibly stay intact like that as long as it was, unless maybe it had a little bit of soap or something in it. I don't know. You can do bubble paint, bubble paintings. Karen, have you ever done? Yeah, you know? yeah, they're they're horribly messy, but I love them. But yeah, I've done it where you're doing the bubble paintings, and then then I I, I look up and I have <laughs> spatters of paint all over my face because <laughs> of the bubbles yeah. popping, and and I'm like down there and it's a little bit, <laughs> so, and you get a headache from blowing. So. Much. no you didn't i never get a headache from blowing i do al i do alcohol ink so i'm i i got oh, okay. a lot of hot air in my <laughs> good lungs that's the one thing about the alcohol um painting when i when we do it it's it's a lot of blowing so you get good exercise so all right okay you guys have a great week i will see yeah. you next week okay um, keep doodling and, and doing stuff. And yeah, if you have any ideas of what you want to try, um, send them to me. I will try and research them and see if there's something that we can do. And I just, I have lots of stuff we can play with. So we'll just keep playing. Okay. Thank right. you so much. Great. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. <laughs>